Hi everyone, welcome to A Room to Bloom. This is Marlene. Thanks for joining me today. So it is February 1st, 2022. So uh, getting a lot of uh, twos. I'm personally looking forward to 2-22-22. So I um, we got a lot of healing energy in that. So um, <clears throat> I decided that I wanted to do a reading here for February for the collective. And so what I'm going to start out with is this deck of cards is called The Power of Love. And this is by James Van Prague. All right, so I'm going to take a few different decks here and see what comes up. All right, Ms. Fair, can you please tell me what messages we have for the collective? As we uh, enter February here on this day, in this moment. Thank you. Okay, the first card is compassion. It says, you demonstrate the language of the heart by actively sharing and living love. So, um, there's one thing that I really want to preface on this video. I really want to keep in tune with self-love first because when we have love and compassion and kindness for ourselves, it is what we reflect out. And so <clears throat> I got a card yesterday. It said, um, you can't, um, you can't fill another another's cup if yours is empty so it's the same type of thing so first of all having I think compassion for yourself in ways when you are feeling um, oh whether it's overwhelmed um, you know you're trying to keep up but you're having a tough time keeping up um, you have many pressures that are on you and you, you're, you're trying to keep it all together and like it's kind of starting to crumble down right and yet you're holding it. It's like the, what, the house of uh, sticks, you know what I mean? So it, the wrong word, the wrong thing happens, and then just everything's going to completely fall apart because that's how much you're trying to hold things together. So the first thing I want to say is really having compassion for yourself is the overall feeling that I'm getting. So again, you demonstrate the language of the heart by actively sharing and living love. So be compassionate with yourself and then turn around and open that compassion for everyone else because you can recognize it when you are in that place where um, you feel fragile, you feel vulnerable. And what you see on the outside is someone reflecting back to you really about your fragility and your vulnerability. And so it's like saying, geez, you know, I feel just like they do. And so maybe we can open a conversation about this, right? Um, so what a beautiful month, February, the month of love, right? To have compassion for yourself and others. Second thing is about responsibility. You are aware of the power of your thoughts and the amount of love you express. So how are you using your thoughts and your words? Um, are you being responsible with them? both to yourself again and to others um i had this card again come up yesterday <clears throat> and one of the things that it said is like could you write down a list of like kind of self-talk that you have done in the last week and so write down a list of positive things that you have said about yourself or negative things and compare those two lists so because it once you recognize what you've done, you can work to shift that. So everything, first of all, we want to shift our thoughts. And when we get control of our thoughts, we better manage our words. So we have a responsibility to ourselves and to others to be aware that our words, our thoughts, and our actions are all very powerful. Um, so... Um, Again, it reads, you are aware of the power of your thoughts and the amount of love you express. Okay. And I'm going to pick another one here. And this is humility. 
You have developed the loving awareness that you and everyone else are the same, but are on different paths. Um, this is very touching to me because um, as you move through this spiritual journey, it's, um, again, it's understanding that we are all reflections of each other. And so um, it's about learning to shed the ego because we're all the same. We're all from the same source ultimately. And um, it's about loving loving yourself and loving others and being humble while that's you know taking place so living in you know a humble life uh, living in humility making sure that your words are um, words that are spoken um, humbly right so again it says humility you have developed the loving awareness that you and everyone else are the same but on different paths okay so <clears throat> all right so we're gonna just take those three right now and then I'm gonna go to a new deck um, this one is called find your light it's an inspiration deck deck by Sarah uh, Burrier and I thought that this would be a good one too about finding your light so if you are um, struggling a bit with just things that are going on in your life you're feeling a bit overwhelmed um, and you feel like maybe things are closing in on you, um, kind of want to run or hide rather than face what is. How do we, how do we work through all of that so we can truly find and be in our own light? All right, Spirit, please show me what it is that you'd like for us to know as a collective here today. This one says, I feel desired. And it's a mermaid. She's under the sea. So again, um, you know, I think we can go through lives. And of course, our life, excuse me. And there are many times when we might not feel desirable. Um, and why don't we feel desirable? That's the question. If you really sat and looked in the mirror and said, why don't I feel desirable? Is it because, is it a physical Thing that you feel like I'm not desirable so I'm not worthy of love is it a uh, like when we get back to this word humility is it words that I'm speaking right that um, make me am I am I anger am I angry inside and not dealing with it do I have pent up emotions about something that I, you know, I'm not having a conversation with someone or we're not getting anywhere on it. Um, so because maybe of speaking words that aren't um, healing, loving and kind, I don't feel desired because I'm speaking words like that. But here in this reading, it says, I feel desired. So this is again about self-love. And when you love yourself, you can feel desired. Um, and you can feel desired because of who you innately are. All right. Okay, the next one is I am gifted. And I just love this card. It's a gal here with butterflies. It's a fairy. And um, I'm gifted. You know, we all have gifts. It's, it's really just asking yourself, what are the gifts that I have? I mean, I think sometimes we get so lost in life and chaos and go, go, go and doing for everyone else. And it's like, you know, some people go, oh, I, you know, oh, I don't have any talents, right? But yes, you do. You have great talents. You just have to sit back and say to yourself, what am I good at? What, and, and not only what am I good at, what do I love to do? What brings me joy? Because the things that bring you joy, um, you can even get better at, right? Because your excitement is there, your energy is there. Um, but we have gifts that are uh, given to us, each and every one of us. And none of us are the same, so our gifts are all different, you know? 
you know, you could be, say, a mom who's whipping up dinner for, you know, 10 kids. Sorry about my furnace here. You could be whipping up dinner for 10 kids and do it all in, you know, 20 minutes. Well, that's a gift. <laughs> you know, I think that's a gift, right? So it's like, what are the talents that I have? Sometimes, of course, like, I have to think about that because I'm the youngest of 11. And I, I often think about my mom like that because she did have gifts like that. She had many gifts, but um, I think when we are pulled in so many directions by, say, other people's energy or whatever, we're like, you don't even feel like you have time to acknowledge your own gifts or recognize them or feel into them or lean into them or literally be them, live them, become them. Um, so promise yourself you'll take some time this month and really lean into, you know, spend a couple hours and say, what are my gifts? What really, what inspires me? What, um, what am I good at? What can I help others with? And how can I make a difference in the world with the gifts that I've been given? So that's where, you know, we're really going with humanity. Anyway, I'm going to take one more of these ones here. And it says, I feel peaceful. And this gal's just laying by a river and she's a mermaid and she's just kind of dozing off. There's white butterflies all around her. So again, I feel peaceful. That is a beautiful gift that you can give yourself for self-love. It's like if you are feeling chaotic, if you are feeling um, like life is spun out of control, that is a gift that you can truly give yourself and that is that I, I you know, whether it's I want to take a bath, I want to go sit in my room, like if you have say a big family and, and you feel pulled, it's like just it, and if you feel like, oh, no, I'll never get the time. Nobody will ever give me that, right? But when you stand up for yourself and say, you know what? I love all of you, but I will be a better, more healed person if I take the time to give myself some love in this month. I'm going to practice self-love so that I can continue to be a better, um, more caring, more compassionate, more... Um, more responsible with my words, etc. So, a more compassionate person who is more responsible with my my words, actions, my thoughts, the whole thing. Okay. So we're gonna move on to the next one. And this this one, I just had to pull this one out. This is the Romance Angels, um, and it's the Oracle deck by Doreen Virtue. And so I'm just gonna bring this one together because of course you know romance love those thoughts are always in our mind in February at some level and again even if you're single and you're not you're not like say thinking about dating or whatever this is still that perfect time to love your inner self love your your outer self love you know love your uh, body love love the foods that you put in it love the the thoughts that you think, the books that you read, love the scents that you have in your home, the colors, the fragrant, you know, the fragrances. Um, love the people in your life with letters, uh, kind kindness, good deeds. Okay, so let's see what this one comes up with here. The first one it says it says keep an open mind. Your soulmate may differ from your usual type and expectations. And. Uh, there's a gal with a little bit of a younger gal, probably her sister in this picture, talking to uh, another gentleman with like Cupid flying above them. So I think sometimes we paint a picture in our mind of what love should be to us, right? Or what love should look like, or what love is, right? So um, if for example, someone who is all about the physique or um, the external, right? Um, but, y you know, you've seen this in movies, right? So they're all about that person, but they can never hold a relationship because that other person is all in their ego, right? So that everything never seems to work out. And the person who keeps loving the physique isn't realizing that. They keep getting the lesson over and over and over that love is deeper than the physique, right? We are love. 
and as well we act in love and we live in love we just are love so like say in a movie for instance someone um goes out with a guy like that he's all in his ego she leaves the date right and then she drives home and she gets a flat tire and a really nice guy pulls out over and helps her get her car back on the road and and totally not what she was ever envisioning but he was the nicest guy the most magnetic personality the biggest brightest smile the kindest heart the um, sincerity oozed from him and all of a sudden it was like the bell goes off and it's like this is love and even though um, you know maybe there was enough time for like all this love but it's it's like moves are closer to what is truth what is real what is honest what is um, what feels like home right so, oops, I'm going to put that card down. Oops, here we go. Anyway, I'm going to put that down here. Um, so, again, I want to go back to this because I actually just laid this on the card. I feel desired. So let's say that in this example where this gal um, keeps going out with these guys and it was like, it's like all about their physique, right? So... She wants that, but in her own self, she is, say, tired of working out. She's sick of running. She's sick of having the perfect diet. She's just kind of sick of that. And yet, so she kind of wants to just be happy and live life and accept herself for who she is and love herself, right? And so when she does that, um, if she's going out with somebody who's all about the ego, all about the physique, she doesn't feel like she can do that. So she doesn't feel desired unless, and when we use this word unless, unless I step up, unless I'm constantly on a diet, unless I forever go to the gym, unless, unless, unless. How about, I just want to feel desired for who I am, where I am um, innately. I want to just be loved. And when I am, I feel desirable where I'm at right and so keeping that open mind about your soulmate who might differ from your usual type and expectations that's like this heart opening that says you you mean you can just love me like this like you know what I mean you can just love me I'm okay you're not gonna judge me you know it's kind of like surprising to people you're not gonna judge me or you know whatever that is right you're just gonna love me and how lovely is that? So, all right, let's take the next one here. Playfulness. To recapture romance, allow your inner youthful spirit to have some fun, have fun to shine. Or your youthful spirit of fun to shine. So, you know, this is one thing I could definitely use a little playfulness. Um, we, You know, we get away from um, being that kid. You know, it's like, Oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to, um, life isn't always about running though. So that's kind of this, this balance that, you know, we work to find. So how can we have playfulness that is, um, yes, of course, some outside, some in the home, some of the heart, you know, so playfulness could be, uh, it could be setting up a big fun date. It could be, uh, doing different things in the home like say setting up a fun little treasure hunt or something like that it could be letters of the heart um but keeping things young and alive i think is important um but again you know i think sometimes people think they have to one up another right we don't have to one up another but you know putting an effort is just so nice it's really nice to be the receiver of someone who's putting in effort um, in a relationship. And um, it's, it, you just feel very valued, but also it's kind of like a test for where your love stands when somebody isn't putting in the, um, the time and or effort to keep the romance alive a bit right so um it can be that test and and then again it's like 
Can you love someone in spite of the fact that they aren't always coming home with flowers on Valentine's Day? You know, they don't do this, they don't do that, they don't whatever. But sometimes I think, you know, there's this saying that we teach people how to treat us, right? So if that becomes, however you wanna look at it, acceptable to you, right? Then you're not making a decision is a decision. Right, so then you're just choosing that that's okay. But if you are able to say that, you know, conversations, a deep conversation is more meaningful to me than flowers that are gonna uh, die in a few days, right? I would rather have a deep, meaningful conversation that I can carry with me always. I would rather have a love letter from you. I would rather have um, words of encouragement. Um, I'd rather have a partner who wants to cheer me on and encourage me, these kinds of things. So anyway, so I like this about the playfulness. Um, and also I'm putting this on the card that says I am gifted. So, you know, when you think about your gifts, how can you play within your gifts and, and encourage your, your partner, friend, um, or soulmate to be a part of your gifts and you be a part of theirs? Um, again, if you don't have someone in your life, like energy attracts like energy. So the more that you play, um, raise your vibration, dance in your kitchen, turn on the radio. Uh, um, once you are really happy in your own life, because you're just really happy where you are, all of a sudden you just start attracting um, people who are really attracted to your energy because you're strong in yourself. Again, I just heard something the other day, like guys, uh, for instance, they get bored if if everything's going just dandy with someone everything's just good 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 the chase is over right and everything's just complacent so um they like to have something kind of stirred up sometimes i think <laughs> so that it's not just complacent so keeping things fresh and that's for yourself too not just don't be doing that always just for someone else. It's like keeping it just fresh for yourself. And then like energy attracts like energy. Okay, the next one is separation. So a time apart from your partner is on the horizon. So, ooh, interesting. I'm getting a siren outside. So um, time apart from your partner is on the horizon. But I'm going to tell you something, especially when I'm talking about self-love. It just says time apart. It doesn't say, oh, a total breakup, wrong person, right? Time apart is a, to me, it's a place of growth. You know, when, when we are constantly giving our energy to someone else, say we go to work and then we come home and then it's like, okay, we gotta make dinner, we gotta do this, what do you want? You're always having to include, say, someone else in all the stuff that you're trying to process, right? But when you um, have some time to literally be with your thoughts, you can get clearer on what it is that your soul is longing for. And, and that doesn't mean um, you don't have to take that so hard. You don't have to say, they don't want to be with me. I'm not worthy, right? No, that's not what it is. Actually, you're so much stronger for it when you say to someone, you know what, I want the best for you. And if this is what you need, to evolve your soul, to grow, to find happiness, to be happy, to whatever it is. I want that for you. And believe me, they won't forget that. They won't forget that you were the kind of person who did that because there might've been other times in their life where they wanted that, but somebody either got rude or nasty or, um, uh, you know, moved on really fast. They didn't like seem to care, right? And that, that really can be a true test of love. It's like, you know, we may be apart, but um, I know that you're, you're on this journey and so am I. So don't sit there in, on your journey wondering about every single step of their journey, right? Take your journey and go, okay, well, here we are. You know, we're still talk occasionally. We're gonna be friends. I'm gonna remove judgment. I'm just gonna be an encouraging force in their life whenever we do speak. And um, I am going to work on my journey. 
I'm going to uh, move into my happiness, my desires. I'm going to have compassion for myself. I'm going to realize, geez, maybe I actually was tired. Not necessarily tired of them, but just tired of there was more involved, right? And so it's kind of like when, when I am alone, I can think more um, peacefully, more clearly. I can connect to source, to energy. I can connect to my guides, angels. And then I start getting a little more direction for my life. My heart starts to open more. Um, and then just see, see where that goes. All right, I'm going to set this one down, and I'm just going to take a couple of these cards. This is the uh, the Light Series Tarot cards. I'm just I'll take three of these as well. Sorry, I have them kind of. I tend to keep them all face up. The ones that were used before. Okay, so what would you like to show us, kind of as a wrap up? for this reading here about love, about self-love, about love in general, about compassion, responsibility, humility. Oh, I've got two, or I've actually got three that jumped out. I'm gonna take all three, but I might take a, a, a couple more cards. The Page of Wands, this gal is dancing. Um, Tossing the wand into the air. I've got the star card and I've got the four of pentacles. So the star card is like your wish coming true. Um, the page of wands with this gal dancing. Um, like just tossing it. She looks like she's doing like a bat baton is what I'm trying to say here. But um, explosive creativity so again if you have separation you've got this explosive creativity and infectious enthusiasm you have ideas a plenty creative beginnings and newfound inspiration and honoring a new skill or passion um so i'll just kind of quickly read you the star card again the um or not again <laughs> but it says expectations fulfilled so it's like your wish is coming true so keep when you keep your thoughts in place keep focused on the the light, the positive, pos positivity. So everything starts with a thought. And then we take an action step and then we see how the universe responds, right? So it also is about healing after traumatic events. So the star card, knowing that you are on the right path, inspiration and renewed hope. And it's funny because she looks like she's holding the star, like almost like on a string, uh, almost like a kite string. And then we have the four of pentacles, which is um, the scales here and she's holding a purse with four, four coins on it. And um, in this, it's about stability, savings, success, generosity, accepting your worth. And I like to use this, accepting your worth in spite of a separation accept that I am worthy. It's just because maybe we're not together right now. It doesn't mean that I'm not worthy of love. It just means that we're growing a little bit different. Maybe we've taken different paths for a while, but that doesn't mean the paths can't come back together in time, right? Um, being in flow with the universe and then feelings of gratitude and then also helping others in times of need. And so sometimes, you know, helping others in times of need is exactly what that partner may need. What they need is just a separation. They need some time to gather themselves, to see where they're at on this journey. Um, I'd also like to say like they might need some time to kind of release the oars instead of paddling upstream and going, oh yeah, okay, I'm getting tired. It's like, I just need to relax a little and float with the river and see what happens. And um, so I think that that's an amazing gift that we can uh, not only give ourselves, but we can give someone else. And when we do that and we find peace, our creativity explodes and our wishes are fulfilled. We heal from many different things and our wishes are fulfilled. So um, I hope that you enjoyed this reading. I want to say thank you for joining me and have a lovely day.